I've accomplished a lot, but there was always more, right? But I, I'm happy with what I've what I've done and wouldn't change anything. I've done it so many times. I've, I've competed so many times. It's just, it's just different because it's my last one and let's go out there. Robbie Lawler, welcome back to BT Sport. How are you, sir? You well? I'm good. You're looking good, looking well. Yep, trying to stay young. <laughs> um, we, of course, heard recently from Dana White that this is the last one. I've heard it from him, I haven't heard it from you. Is it the last one? Yeah, I think so. It's just I've been doing this a long time and times are changing and it's just, it is what it is. You never know, though, but I feel like it's, it's done. What's, what's brought you? to that conclusion? Uh, just different chapters. I mean, just part of the sport. I mean, you just can't do it forever. It'd be nice to do it forever <laughs> and stay young and, but different chapters, give back to the sport, have other fighters at our gym at Kill Cliff FC kind of that I can help out and mentor and do what so many other fighters have did to me, just make me better and, and teach me. So that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give back We'll talk coaching in a minute. I'm excited to see what you what you do uh, with that going forward. But what are the emotions like then this week coming into the fight? Is there, is there a different emotion or is it exactly the same for you? No, there's no emotion on that. It's just uh, just the fight. I've been doing this for so long. I mean, I'm, I mean, I started martial arts when I was eight. So I mean, wrestled at a, a whole bunch and then started training full time in 2000. So long career. An amazing career yeah. of, of which, part of which will be celebrated this week with a, with a Hall of Fame induction for your fight, obviously, um, with Rory. Um, as you maybe have had a moment to have a think about all those fantastic double decades that, you, that you've had inside the cage in the octagon, what are your overriding emotions as you look back on that career? I actually don't really look much back at it until like everyone asks me about it, but it's, it's, it's not like the accomplishments, it's not like the fights I've won or the fights I lost, it's who I've met, the places I've seen, and like the relationships that you create and, and, and those types of things. That's, that's what you'll remember is like the faces, the guys who helped you get to where you are, and I think that's what it's all about. When you set off on the journey when you're a young boy and then making the decision to actually do this as a career, what was the ambition? What did, what did you want to achieve? Uh, it changed over time, but really I just wanted to fight. I, I loved, so like when I first learned of MMA, UFC, I was 16 and I was like, hold on a second, what do you guys do? <laughs> and I was like, oh crap, I've been training this my whole life. I'm like, this is what you do? I'm like, when I was a sophomore in high school, I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. This is what I've been trained. This is my mindset. This is the kind of movies I watch. Like, and I was like, that's what I'm doing. So it was like, I just wanted to be a part of it and just cultivate my craft and, and sharpen my skills and, and enjoy competing. And I didn't really didn't have any goals other than that, be able to pay my bills and, and, and beat people up and train. So, I mean, that's what I like to do. I like to train, lift weights, work out, kickbox, boxing, jiu-jitsu, wrestling. I, I like doing those things. So it was just easy. I'm like, okay, I get to just do this all day. So, and that's all I want to do. But over time, they're like, there was different goals that I set here and there but more or less it'd be like, oh, I want to fight that guy, or I'd be not, I wouldn't say it to anybody, but, but I'd be thinking like, oh, like from the outside looking <laughs> in, I'd be like, okay, be nice to fight that guy. So yeah, it was just then slowly over time, then I wanted prizes like titles and those things, but really I just love the competition and I love the training. With, with that in mind then, have you exceeded your expectations? Oh man, I've done so much. Yep. And I'm always one of those guys, could I have done more? And that's what drive, 
drove me for so long and that's what like could I have done more how could I tweak this and that's really the hard thing about making this my last fight because I'm a freaking scientist so I'm like okay like okay this didn't feel right how can I go back and sharpen that make my body feel good so that's kind of like my mindset I'm like so it's, it's just weird it's I've accomplished a lot but there was always more right but I'm happy with what I've what I've done and wouldn't change anything. Listen, you're not a man for accolades. You've just explained the exact reasons why you're here. But obviously, this week, part of International Fight Week, there is a Hall of Fame induction and that epic fight that you had with Rory's going in there. What did you feel when when you got that call and you and you were told that you were going to be a now an active part of the UFC Hall of Fame? Really, for me, it was weird because it was like. Because I got told on the phone, they're like, hey, uh, I called the UFC, and I was like, hey, I, I can't go to, uh, well, I don't want to go to the fight in Miami. Okay. Because I was just out of town for my son's soccer matches all week, and I'm like, I'm sick of dealing with people. So I'm like, called them, I'm like, hey, I'm not coming. He goes, okay, thanks, Robbie, for letting me know. And then like 30 minutes later, he goes, calls back, and he's like, hey, uh, the reason I've been asking you to come to these fights is because we're going to announce it. I'm like, all right, I'll show up. It's exciting, but I feel like it's good for the fans. For me, I'm satisfied. I, I knew what I, I competed and I did my thing. I'm, I'm not waiting on people to appreciate me. I appreciate what I've done. So, yeah. it's, And it's actually hard for me to accept. I do it. But it's it's weird to accept like congratulations and this and that because it's like those things come and go. That's why it's been so easy for me to go like this because I'm not riding the highs and lows of people being excited to see me. Oh, that was a great fight. So I'm just like taking in stride and just kind of like okay, cool. Like I'm interested to know how you deal with fame because to, to us, to the fans. You're an absolute legend, so I've no doubt when you're out and about, people are constantly coming up, but you're quite a humble, quiet, down-to-earth guy. That can be quite invasive to, to private life, I suppose, couldn't it? How do you deal with that? Uh, yeah, I keep my private life my private life. I'm a fighter. Everyone sees me as the fighter who comes out there, gives it his all, and goes home, shows respect, and, and tries to treat people with respect. And, yeah, I'm just, just another guy. I just happen to be have a great career doing what people like to watch. So like that, for some reason, that makes me up here or something. But I'm just another guy who just, sh I was striving to do something and create. And, and I think people appreciate that. And one thing that I'm doing a better job is appreciating people, appreciating what I've done. <laughs> you know, like, okay, okay thank you. I, like given that time and like, because without the fans, like, where would this sport really of be? Course. Really, the, would there be a me if there was no fans? You know, just how it is. Like so. So, this week, obviously, the fans then get to celebrate that particular fight. But is there a fight in those two decades that you look at and you go, actually, this one's even better? Or from a, maybe a performance point of view that you look at and you go, that's the night that I was absolutely superb. I would say, I was just talking in another interview, I was like, I would say the Johnny Hendricks, the first fight was, was the fight that actually kind of like yeah. got me going. Cause I trained for him and I remember, go, and I felt great, but I was just, I didn't get the job done. Playing and simple, I didn't get the job done. He got the victory. And I remember thinking it's not gonna happen again and, and that I need to do more. So he actually got me to Rory. So yeah. then I, Johnny Hendricks hurt his bicep in that fight. So then it was like, all right, what am I gonna do? I fought in May, I fought in, I was just like back to back just fighting. And the whole time I was training for Johnny. Like no matter who I was fighting, when I was doing the Aerodyne and I was training, I was training for him. And he, he was my driving force because he had what I wanted. And and those those that was a grueling year for me. It was just like training camp after training camp after training camp. I think for six months, I didn't go home. I was at my house for two weeks. 
Wow. Yeah, so I was away from my family for pretty much half a year just training, getting ready for fights because I was focused on what I wanted and where I was going. So I think that was the key fight. That first one that I lost yeah. gave me that hunger and that drive. And then I ended up winning the title against Johnny in a, in a fight in Vegas. And then I was able to rest, get a little bit of a break and then catapult me into the Rory fight. And well, just on that period, Hendrix, Rory, and then for me, my favorite ones, Condit. Yep. Those three back to back to back are just correct. Now that you can maybe take a little bit of a breath and think about the level and the standard of those fights that won countless awards over that period of time for, for what they provided for fans. How do you look at them now? Do you, do you look at them like they took anything from you, that that, that was peak performance? How do you look at that, those, that three fight period? I would look at, they gave me their all, I gave them my all. And that's how I always try to go out there and fight. And when you get those types of things and you get two guys going at it like that and just battling and you get good training camps, training those guys with the skills and, and then guys being able to make adjustments. That's yeah. really what makes good fights. It's guys making adjustments. It's not a rerun every round it's like okay this wasn't working let me try this and then i'll get back to that so high level guys make adjustments and kind of create new opportunities and new varieties and, and that's what i think we got in those fights you mentioned there that spending two weeks at home in a six month period whilst you were obviously going through this how much does it affect personal relationships the dedication that's needed to get to the level that you get to uh it can, but you have to have strong people around you. And uh, really though, in a selfish way, I'm just focused. Yeah. So you gotta make sure you have everything situated and ready to go so that you can have that singular focus. And I had that at home and I had a support group for my wife and child. So the, those things were taken care of and I was just out there <laughs> focused. Coaching, obviously working alongside Henry at Killcliffe. What a gym, first and foremost. Yep. So, so many fantastic guys um, on those mats. How are you enjoying that? How are you enjoying passing that knowledge on uh, to others that are coming through now, trying to do what, the things that you've done? It, it's nice. It's, that's really what, this, what sports is about. That's what martial arts is about. It's about giving back. Like so, At some point in time, I was a rough individual who had athletic talents and abilities that needed refinement and then I was able to get different pieces here and there and, and that's what I'm going to try to give to everyone else like these little pieces like hey in this spot let's let's do this instead of what you're doing and and I enjoy that it's it's that's what it's all about it's giving back I mean this sport's given so much to me and I'm going to have to give too. How do you think you'll be on Saturday making that walk? I'll be good. It's just I've, I've done it so many times. I've, I've competed so many times. It's just it's just different because it's my last one. And let's go out there, get I'm, it done. I'm not going to ask you what's going to happen because I know yeah. every single time when you go out there, yeah, what you're going to bring. I keep it simple, anyways. When people <laughs> ask me that, I'm just kind of like, ah, oh, you know, give yeah. them the generic answer because that's just we're getting ruthless, Robbie Lawler. Yeah. Robbie Lawler is what exactly. We're, what we're getting. Yep. But what I want to say from all the fight fans that are watching this on BT Sport, and I hope you take this well, just thank you. Thank you for sharing that talent over the last two decades with us and giving us so many phenomenal moments, and we're looking forward to one more of those moments on Saturday night. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Go well, mate.